Hello, my friend. This is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Center Ministries, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. You hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I have good news for you, my friend. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Pay close attention as we prepare now to go into the word. Amen. But if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to uh, Revelation, Revelation uh, the second chapter of Revelation. Uh, this is part two. Somebody say, it's time to go back. Uh, say it one more time. It's time to go back. Amen. It's part two. It's time to go back. So we have Revelation, uh, the second chapter of the book of Revelation. I want you to go ahead and say amen. Y'all got it real quick. Amen. How y'all know already? Y'all, y'all saying, no, no, just playing. Well, Father, we just say thank you. We had good prayer, good worship. But as we uh, get into the word, Father, just open it up to us. Open it up to us. Open it up to us. Teach through me, Holy Spirit. Teach us on this morning. I pray, God, that the saints of God that are hearing, those that are watching, those that are listening by radio, Lord, that they will get a direct word from you on today. So much so, God, that it will cause them, it will unction them to line up. And this is what I pray on today, and I believe you to do it in Jesus' name. If you agree, say amen. 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 So Revelation chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 1. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that, it, that if you if you ever uh, been a minister or a preacher of God's word, uh, when you read certain chapters and certain verses, you, you just want to stop and just, you know, break them all down because there's just so much in those verses. But with the help of the Lord, I'm not going to do that today because I want to stick to a certain point because it's very, very uh, imperative that you get what the Lord is saying through us on not just today, but in this season. Amen. In this time that we're living in now, uh, it's a time that we should be sober minded. Amen. Should be very, very serious, very, very focused on our saved life. Hallelujah. We're talking about, I was just rambling. I call it rambling, but I think it was good conversation we're having on Friday night. Amen. We did get into our lesson, uh, the person of the Holy Spirit. We did get on, uh, what, John chapter 14. We worked on we worked on that a little bit, but we began to get off and talk about some things to the glory of God. But, man, we, we, we got to get serious with this because if, you, if you're in the world, if you're listening to me, you're watching me, and you're not saved, uh, you living in this world right now because the enemy of Satan knows that his time is short. And those that are unbelievers, those that are not saved, he could take them captive at will. You cannot say what you won't do in this day and time. The longer you stay out there, boy, I'm trying to tell you. Didn't we talk about that Friday night? You don't know what you do. That's why for saints of God, we got to make sure that we stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Stay focused, stay on task of what we're doing. Hold fast to our confession and our profession of Jesus Christ. Amen. Like we, get, we begin to talk about idol. Having, make sure you don't have any idols in your life. Idols, anything that takes the place of God, anything that takes the time that you should have been spending with God. If that thing is taking that place of the prayer time, if that thing is taking place of the study or taking place of you just being, you know, just walking in worship like we should be doing. Walking in a prayer for mind, that thing has become your idol. And we seen uh, way back when Moses went up to the mount, amen, to be with God. I think it was uh, the 40 days or whatever. He went up there. The children of Israel, they begin to get, like, they get antsy. Like, man, he ain't never coming down. Amen. So now let's go ahead and tap into these things that we want to do anyway. He ain't coming back. Amen. They begin to pressure Aaron so much so, much so that he begin, he put the gall to go. Get all that gold y'all got. Put that gold in the fire. And lo and behold, he comes out with a golden calf. And they begin to worship that idol, that golden calf. And man, they got in all type of perversions and all things. So idol worship brings forth a perverted spirit. Yeah. Amen. Idol worship leaves you open for anything. Amen. So we've got to stay on task and on target in this time that we're living in right now. If you agree, say amen. amen. Somebody, somebody say, you ain't no match for the devil without Jesus Christ. You ain't no match for the devil, man. <laughs> Master manipulator. Amen. Crafty, cunning. The Bible speaks of the wiles of the devil. The devil think, make you think you in control, man, you, you understand? That's one is to say, make you think you got it. And you don't even know, man, you better walk off a cliff spiritually. Hmm? 
So let's get into Revelation chapter 2. Again, we're going to say the topic, it's time to go back, part 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1, we're going to get into it. I'm doing real good right now, don't you think? It said, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. If you want to know what the seven stars is, just go back up. Uh, look back up to uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. He breaks down what the mystery of the stars uh, represent. Amen? And the candlesticks. But it says, These things say, He that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Listen to verse 2. He says, I know thy works. Now, you, that's a good thing now, especially if you're doing good works. He says, I know your works. So that lets us know, now, red writing, this is Jesus' words. This is what Jesus was speaking. Amen. But that's a, he, that lets us know that God is paying attention to our life. He told this particular church, I, I know your works and, and thy labor. He know what you're doing. That's why you got to make sure you're doing everything unto him. Know what we talk about during the week? Make sure everything that we do, even uh, you do it for the ministry. You understand? Do it for me as your pastor. Do it for my wife uh, as your first lady. You make sure that you're doing it as, if you pick up a piece of paper in this building, make sure you're doing it as unto the Lord. Because if you don't, you ain't going to get no reward for it. Amen? So whatever you do, amen, you clean a seat. What? Just do, you're doing it, your heart should be doing it because this is the Lord's house. Amen. This is not just a, a, a conference room that pastor is uh, paying for, for us to be here to come and worship God. But this is actually litter because this is the place that we have. We have really chosen it. But we, you understand what well, we have chosen in a sense. But you know what I'm saying? We're not comfortable here. But this is the place where we gather together in his name to worship him. This is his house. Let me get this church clean for Pat. You ain't get the church clean for me. Better get the church clean because it's, you understand this is the Lord's house. And the Lord just told us that he know our works. He know, and like I say, the in-depthness of knowing the works, he knows why you're doing the works. He knows the motive of the work. Always got to make sure that you examine yourself. Like I say, we came out of a large ministry. I had a pastor, which you would deem, they would call a mega church pastor i constantly had to examine myself amen. amen i had the privilege of being close to him personally close to him for uh i think our relationship start with me and him one-on-one -on -one close together when i begin to look at him not just as my pastor but as my mentor and friend amen yeah. father in the gospel and all of that personally i think we had nine years together for that but during those nine years I constantly had to check my motive for why I was doing things. Amen. You understand? I constantly had to uh, examine myself. You know? Every time the Lord, sometimes he'll give me something encouraging. Uh, thank God the times that I did send encouraging texts. So it was on point. It was something he really was doing. But before I sent that text, you better rest assured. I done prayed. I done pondered. Lord, is this you or is this just me? You understand how, you, how I go back in my mind. Is this you or, do you, or I'm just saying this. Or, or you, I, you don't know how I went back and forth. The Lord probably like, well, just send a text. You understand? But, you know, just, you know, I constantly would do that. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? Because that, that was, you know, you... I, I'm finna go all off, Holy Spirit. I know I asked you to teach us, so I'm just go all off. But well, if you have that type access, not just talking to y'all, but we on radio, you know, we on social media. If you have that type access to uh, a man of God, a woman of God, you want to make sure that you examine yourself. Amen. Especially like my man of God, if he was somebody that was known, amen, not just locally, but around the world, it's easy to get off tasks. Because in the flesh, it means something to be around somebody like that. Amen. In the flesh, it, 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 it makes you look like you somebody if you're around somebody like that. Come on, come on. Someone said, let's be real now. Let's be real. See, I used to be real with myself. That's because I was real with myself and I knew that, admitted that to myself, that's what caused me to examine myself. See, a lot of people, you can't examine yourself if you can't be real with yourself. 
You got to first be real with yourself and, and be real of what you're, you're capable of. We're all capable of, of anything. There's nothing you're not capable of. There's nothing that you, you understand what I'm saying, that is, it, that's impossible for you to touch if you not, don't stay in the right place with God. Thank God I had a heart and a mind to know, hey, man, I could, get, I could start thinking I'm somebody. You understand? If, if I don't check myself. Huh? And I won't go deep, you know, all deep into it because we are going to stay on task. But, but somebody say, just check your motives because the Lord knows our work. Hmm? He said, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. I hope, yeah, amen. That was good. They couldn't bear them. They couldn't stand to be around or, or the deeds of the ones that were doing evil. Hmm? And I, I just want to thank, since he's addressing the church, I, I, I don't think he's talking about ones doing evil in the world because the world do evil. Just like I brought out on Friday night, you know, uh, we always, oh, we look at what the world's doing right now. Oh, man, the world this, the world that. Oh, it's so crazy. They're doing this now. And, and, and the Holy Ghost just answers me. It's like, why are we, when, when I speak of we, I mean us as the body of Christ, those of us that respond in these ways, why are we, why are we act like we're so surprised? Amen. As if we don't believe what the Bible say. The Bible told us it was going to be like this. We're actually going to get into it today. Uh, and, and, and some of the scriptures from one of the, uh, uh, the apostle wrote, to, I think he wrote to Timothy. He's going to be talking about the, these last days, man, these last days, it's perilous times. But we are like, we're so shocked of all the perversion or all the things that we see. Why are we so shocked? People that believe the Bible should not be shocked. People that believe the Bible are like, oh, man, look at here, boy, about fulfilling itself. Amen. We know we are in the last days, and Jesus Christ is soon to come. Let me truly get about my father's business now. Because this thing is happening just like he said. So we shouldn't be surprised. Amen. If you believe the, someone say, if you believe the word, the word already told us it was going to happen. And it's going to get worse and worse. But to thank God for the grace of God, he said, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Amen. So like you see sin progressing, amen, waxing worse or growing worse and worse, that grace is increasing. That's why it's not going to be an excuse for anybody that goes to hell. Huh? God got all this grace, and he is sending this grace out on a day-to-day, day-to-day basis. Amen. But he says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them or tested them which say they are apostles and are not. I told you people could say they this, they could say they that, but they're not. Amen. Thank God we ain't, we ain't got time. We don't, we're not even hung up on, on titles in this ministry. Amen. Amen. I was taught of my father in the gospel, just do the work. Just do the work. The work will speak for you to the glory of God. And that's what we've been doing uh, since I've been taught that way. That's very, very wise counsel. Just do the work. Amen. He said, but they tried them, which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. You know how the Bible says, try, try the spirit or test the spirit to see whether they be of God. You got to know, you got to be mature saints of God. You can't receive everybody. In anything that's out here right now. The Bible says try those spirits. Test those spirits. How do you try? How do you test? You try them. You test them by the word of God. Trust that you are blessed by the word that you just heard. If so, we would like for you to come and visit us on Sundays at 10 a.m. And also for our Bible studies Wednesday and Friday nights from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Right here in the beautiful city of Jacksonville, Florida. 1351 Airport Road. Again, that's 1351 Airport Road. The phone number is Erico 904 713 3609. Again, that's Erico 904 713 3609. You can also check us out on the web at worldharvestcm.org. Again, that's worldharvestcm.org. But until next time, be blessed of God.